Hi, welcome back to Enzyme Function and Kinetics in Biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. All right, so in the last few videos, what we've been talking a lot about is the Lineweaver-Burke equation, which is shown right here. I'm going to abbreviate that. This is the Lineweaver-Burke equation. And the Lineweaver-Burke equation is a manipulation of the Michaelis-Menten equation, which we've also been doing a lot of in the past few videos. And it's useful for calculating the Km and Vmax of an enzyme. All right, so we hopefully know by now that Vmax is very difficult to estimate directly from um, a Michaelis-Menten plot. So we transform the equation into this, which is also called a double reciprocal equation. And we plot 1 over the rate initial rate, that is, versus 1 over substrate, and we get a, 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 a line, a straight line, that is in the form of this equation. Now, the Lineweaver-Burke equation is certainly the most common method that we have to estimate Vmax and the Km of the enzyme, but it turns out there's another way we can manipulate this uh, equation, and we can also get something called the haynes wolf equation. And the haynes wolf equation is also useful for estimating the Vmax and the Km of an enzyme. And it turns out that if you use the haynes wolf equation, which we're going to show how you get that now, um, you'll actually get the same answer for Vmax and the, or, yeah, and the Km. Excuse me. All right, so let's go into the derivation. All right, so we have this Lineweaver-Burke equation, and it says that 1 over the rate, initial rate, is equal to Km over Vmax times... 1 over the substrate concentration plus 1 over Vmax. And hopefully we know by this point that this is actually in the form of a straight line because 1 over the initial rate is y. This Km over Vmax is the slope of the line m. 1 over the substrate concentration is our x, and then our y-intercept is 1 over Vmax. So if you plot, if you actually were to plot 1 over V0 versus 1 over substrate concentration, you get a straight line. Okay. Now what I can do here is I can actually, for each of these three terms, so those terms are this one, this one, and this one, I can multiply all of those times the substrate concentration. And here's what happens. So I'm going to multiply 1 over V0 times concentration of the substrate, multiply all this, which is Mx, times the substrate concentration, and multiply 1 over Vmax times the substrate concentration. So what I ultimately get is this. So substrate concentration over V0. Notice here that the substrate concentrations here cancel, so what I'm left with is Km over the Vmax, and then we're going to add on to that the substrate concentration over Vmax. Now again, um, our variables here are substrate concentration and the initial rate. Um, Km and Vmax are constants for a given enzyme, and we can determine those, but the whole point is the constants in this perspective are this, this, and then this. So what I can do, because substrate concentration is a variable, for this term right here, I can ultimately rewrite it as such. I can say 1 over Vmax, and then pull out the substrate concentration like this. So, it, so you can explicitly see that substrate concentration in this case is a variable, and 1 over Vmax is a constant. Okay. And you can essentially rearrange this such that you get substrate concentration over the initial rate is equal to, in this case, the 1 over Vmax is the slope of the line M, times the substrate concentration, and then plus the Km over the Vmax. And since both Km and Vmax are constants for a given enzyme, the quotient of them is also a constant, and it represents the y-intercept. And it turns out that just like the Lineweaver-Burke equation, uh, this is the haynes wolf equation, and it also represents a straight line. Okay, now there are, there's a few differences to note here between the Haynes Wolf plot, which is shown right here. This is a Haynes Wolf plot, and I should really be specific. The y axis here is this it's the substrate concentration over the initial rate, and the vertical, or excuse me, the horizontal axis is just the substrate concentration. Okay, so this is not a double reciprocal plot like the Lineweaver Burke plot was. Lineweaver Burke plot had 1 over rate up here and 1 over substrate concentration down here. So this is not a, a double reciprocal plot double reciprocal plot. You instead plot these things right here, S over V and then versus S, and it still yields a straight line. However, when we did the Lineweaver-Burke equation, this point right here in light blue, remember, was negative 1 over the Km. It turns out that each of these points and the slope of the line are actually going to be different for a Haynes-Wolf equation. So it turns out that the y-intercept, 
this point in pink right here is actually not 1 over v max. In the line weaver burke plot, it was 1 over v max. When you do a Haynes Wolf plot instead, the y intercept is actually the km over the v max. Okay, so this is km over the v max. When you extrapolate this line down to the x axis where y is 0, that's the x intercept. It turns out that the x-intercept in this case is not negative 1 over km. The x-intercept is just negative km. Um, so it's, again, different than it was for the line weaver burke plot. And another difference, the slope of the line, the slope of the line is also different. If you remember, in the case of the line weaver burke plot, the slope, the slope in a line weaver burke plot was actually km over the vmax. Again, that also changes here. If you take the slope or the derivative of substrate concentration over v naught with respect to substrate concentration, it's actually just one over v max. Okay, so ultimately, let's do a little quick uh, abstract example, and then in the next video, we're actually going to look at specific examples of how you calculate these things with numbers. But in any case, suppose suppose I have I I, I plot this line, and I ultimately get this equation. Um, y is equal to, I'm just making up numbers here at this point, let's say y is equal to 4x, I don't know, let's say plus 5. Okay, that's the, that's the line that, that's generated from using the haynes wolf um, plot on Excel. Okay, so what does this tell us? Well, number one, it tells us the slope, which if you remember, this is the slope right here, that is the slope. The slope is just 1 over v max. So m, the slope, is 1 over the v max. Now I'm neglecting units here, there would be units, but this slope, which is equal to 1 over v max, is 4. So what would the v max be? The v max would just be 1 over 4, or this would be 0 0.25 with whatever units the rate was in. All right. Now what we also have is the y-intercept, right? The y-intercept, okay, is just this right here. This is, let me get it in green, this is the y-intercept, right, from our uh, regression line is b. And our y-intercept b is, let's see, km over the vmax. km over the vmax, all right? Well, we know what b is, it's 5. We, know, we just found the vmax. So, in other words, if we take b, the uh, y-intercept times the vmax, which we just found, that has to equal the km. Well, the, the y-intercept, and again, I'm neglecting units here, but the y-intercept is 5. The vmax we just found to be 1 fourth or 0 0.25. So the km of this enzyme is actually 5 fourths or 1.25 with whatever molarity type of units you have. Okay, so that's the km. This is the vmax. All right. Now, Another thing that's, and also if you knew the x-intercept, then you could figure out what the x-intercept was um, in this equation. Another way you could find the, um, find the, the, the km is to find the x-intercept. So the, x, the, the line intersects the x-axis when y is 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this regression line, set y to 0. So we have 0 is equal to 4x plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5 over to the other side. I get negative 5 is equal to 4x divide by 4, and it turns out that the x, or x-intercept, is negative 5 fourths, and we know that x-intercept is equal to minus km, so that means the km is 5 fourths, or 1.25, so you get the same answer. Okay, There is a benefit of doing a haynes wolf plot over the line weaver burke plot, and the benefit is, in, at least in my opinion, and perhaps you can see this, um, in some cases, it may actually be easier to do a Haynes Wolf plot. And the reason it might be easier is because a lot of times whenever you are um, whenever you are um, doing all the calculations to set up a line weaver burke equation or plot, remember it's a double reciprocal plot. So you have to take one over the rate, you have to take one over the substrate concentration. And then to be perfectly honest, in my opinion, um, actually finding Km and finding Vmax are actually a little bit more difficult. Um, I mean, they're not terrible, but you can see here, hopefully, that to actually find the Vmax with a haynes wolf plot, you just, I mean, you take the, uh, you take the slope, it's given, that's in your, your you know, linear regression line, 
is 4, just take the reciprocal, that's the V max, and then take that and multiply by B, the y-intercept, and that's your Km. So at least from, I, I think from um, an arithmetic point of view, the haynes wolf plot is actually easier to find these values from. Now the line weaver brook plot was actually developed first. It was the first one that was developed. Um, and that's why typically it's the convention to use it. If you open a biochemistry textbook, typically you will actually see the line weaver brook plot. They generally don't teach the haynes wolf uh, method or the haynes wolf equation. But remember, since you are, since when we, since the haynes wolf equation is derived explicitly from the lineweaver burke equation, it's still valid and it'll give you the exact same answer. Now one thing to watch out for is if you're actually doing one of these methods, the y equals mx plus b equation, y equals 4x plus 5, that you get from Haynes wolf plot is not going to be the same equation that you get from uh, a lineweaver burke plot. So if you get, you'll get two separate linear regression equations for those. All right, but in the next video, we're actually going to do um, some more with really specific numbers. I'll probably um, make some data, and we'll, we'll do a Haynes Wolf plot for that, and then also a Lineweaver Burke plot, and then we'll show that you actually get the same answers for both of them, and that'll be really cool. But hopefully, you can see that this method is actually a little bit easier, not for the fact that actually computing Km and Vmax are easier, but also notice you don't have to take the reciprocal of anything. You just take the substrate concentration for the x-axis and then just divide it by the rate to get the y-axis. So I think overall this method is a little bit easier. Um, it's not normally taught, but at least it's useful to know um, because it's a lot quicker also. All right, thank you for watching this video. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications, and we're going to go over um, more examples of this in the coming videos. Thank you so much.